Um, okay, so hi, my name is Asia. Um, I'm gonna be talking to you about, obviously, channeling your inner top speaker and what I think that that means. Um, hello, that was very racist. There we go. You're not wrong, your adapter, a little janky, I forgive you though. Um, it's okay, uh, thank you for letting me use it. Um, so yeah, channeling your inner top speaker, what I think that means. Um, a little bit of background on me about, so if you're questioning whether or not you think I'm qualified to discuss this, um, I debated in Kansas for basically my entire career. I still am in Kansas. I coach at the University of Kansas. I coach at Shine Mission South. I've coached several top speakers. If you don't know, you can look at, I think like the 2020, maybe 2021, uh, top two speakers at the Glenbrook tournament two years in a row. Um, I also personally was a top speaker. I'm actually the first black woman to win top speaker at the national debate tournament at the college level, um, respectfully. Um, and if you're wondering, wow, she's just gassing herself up. What a bitch. Um, joke's on you, because that's kind of the point of the lecture, is that some of you all need to walk the walk. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're not quite there yet. So learning how to hype yourself up and not be coy about it, very important. And we'll get to that in a second. But I'm more than qualified to talk about this, I feel. Um, so if there are questions, please do so. Something about me, I thrive off of questions and conversation. So if you have a question, please ask it when you think of it, not at the end, because either A, I won't really remember what you're referencing, not that I think this lecture will be so complicated that I'll forget, but still. Um, but also because we're in the era of TikTok where everyone has ADHD and doesn't remember um, anything that they wanted to ask. So if you think of a question, just ask it. Um, I am gonna say raise your hand because knowing Wallace, he will not, so I'm gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> raise your hand, don't shout out, it's gonna annoy me. Um, for everyone else, I imagine if you just speak before raising your hand, I don't think it would be a big deal, but I'm implementing a universal rule to avoid any qualms. Are there any questions, comments, concerns about this? I'm pretty chill vibes, so love this for you. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a before and after because obviously I sent my credentials um, in this area of the things, um, but I was not always that glamorous of a speaker, respectfully to myself. Um, so this is, one second, I also don't know how loud the volume is, so we'll see how this goes. Um, this is me when I was like 18, uh, debating for KU, I think this is, yeah, see the finals. Um, and I sound like absolute shit. We're gonna watch this and, hold on. This is me giving a really cringe speech that goes on forever. Oh it's okay, it's nothing, uh, listen, economic conditions, it is what it is. Okay, um, we're gonna watch this. Uh, I want you to kind of take some notes about things that you think are going okay, because I don't think anything's going great, per se. Um, and things that you think, Asia, you kind of could have been better at this. I probably agree, but write them down. Hold on. Hold on, I don't know why the sound is not working. Give me a second. Technology, God fucking forbid. This one more time. Nope. Jesus Christ. Is it wrong if I can't get this too? Does anyone feel like they're technologically proficient? Hold on, wait. This might work. And then it turns off. Love that. <laughs> Capital can stop of it. Nope. Wrong video. You see what's happening here? Like, what's <laughs> <wrong? laughs> the struggle is fucking real. We were at like 15, 15, 27, 30. I'm not <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, like right there. Yeah. Oh. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> 
Okay, weird. I don't know. Um, I'll come back to this. We'll do it the before and after later. Significant for reasons, but I'm just going to get into the nitty gritty because I fucking don't have the patience for the technology this morning. Okay, great. Um, hello? I'm going to freak out. And we're all going to be like, oh my god, Asia like threw her computer this morning. That was so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have an adapter? No offense, but this is gonna piss me off. Uh, you know, like it has an HDMI port for your Mac. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Great, we're just gonna keep doing this. That's fine. All right, <laughs> fuck it, we ball. Um, okay, channeling your inner job speaker. First of all, everything is a performance. Asia, I don't read poetry or talk about my experience as insert this racial category um, in debate. So I don't do performance debate. Not what I'm talking about. However, even if that is the case, you are performing. Everything in debate is per everything in debate is performance. The way that you ask cross six questions, when you try to get the judge to laugh at the opponent for mishighlighting something, when you think that you're going super super fast speedy mode, and you're like, oh, yes, I'm gonna get great speech for sounding like a vacuum cleaner. I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> All that is performance. Okay. Ethos, very important. We'll talk about this periodically as I go through the things, but if you don't understand this, wait for it, it's coming back. If you don't understand what I mean by that, or you don't understand this, you're probably not very good at getting speaker awards. <laughs> well, Asia, I got the novice uh, second speaker, da 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 not what I'm talking about. We're talking about longevity here. We're talking about presence. We're talking about controlling the energy of the room. So the judge can't think about anything else, but damn. They said this really amazing argument. That's so great. And I literally can't think about the rest of the debate without going back to that argument because it was just like so good. Or this cross sex moment was crazy and I just like literally can't stop thinking about it. Okay? You have to understand this. The other thing too is just like existing in general in public is usually also a performance. I pinky swear if you've ever had a conversation with a black person, it's probably a performance. If you're not black, respectfully. Um, because it takes exhausting emotional energy to engage with people who are different than you, okay? So you also probably, for example, when you're talking to your teacher that you probably hate or something, like math, I don't know, and you're like, if I say something out of pocket or something that she probably deserves to hear, I'm probably going to get a detention. So instead, I'm just going to smile and nod and act like everything's chill, even though I swear to God, if this woman tries to talk to me about fractions one more time, I'm going to freak out. Performance, okay? Great. Again, I'll talk about this periodically as we progress. So, when we think about speaking, great, it's dramatic effect for the next slide. We think about speaking, right, or being a top speaker, what that means, right? I think the first thing that usually comes to mind is spreading and drilling. See, I'm reminding myself, elaborate on what you want to discuss. How many of you do speaker drills like on a regular basis? Be honest. Okay, this number I actually buy. If all of you raise your hand, I'd be like, you're all fucking lying. Performance. See what I'm saying? Okay, great. We love honesty. Um, drilling, you should do it. I'll give some examples here in a second. But you should be drilling. I'm not saying that you need to drill for like 30 minutes every day. I am saying, though, that maybe the week of a tournament, right, you should probably drill from like 10 to 20 minutes a day. 10 is probably good, to be honest, if you did it like every day from this like Monday to Friday, like when you leave or something. Some people, however, would be like, mm, also probably not necessary. You could probably just drill the morning of every day of the tournament and kind of be chill. Okay? Drilling, very important. The reason being is that when you debate, when you debate, you're not talking how you normally would talk to like your parents or your friends or whatever. Asia, obviously, I'm not spreading. I know, I'm getting there. So this is important because it's like, some people don't think about this, but like literally you do have to train, not just like your ability to spread and get faster, okay? But you need to train your brain to understand what you sound like when you are spreading or going very fast. Why? Why does that matter? Why is that relevant? Because if you don't know what you sound like, it is harder for you to control or make immediate changes in a speech or throughout the debate in order for the judge to be following you or to make sure the judge is like staying with you conceptually and also just performatively speaking. 
If the judge is lost and is not vibing with you and how you sound and you can't determine that or you don't notice that, then you're probably not controlling the energy of the space very well. And that's very important. This is obviously harder to do over the internet, but not impossible. Okay, so if you're still doing like versions of Zoom debate, hearing you, very good accessibility tool. Okay, again, harder, but not impossible. So knowing what you sound like, very important. So I'm gonna start with the drilling stuff and then we'll kind of expand into like more of the ethos type stuff. But these are the drills that I think are the best ones to do. Over enunciation, backwards, and forward for clarity rather than speed. <coughs> Does anyone know what I mean when I say over enunciation? I know I have some people from my lab in here, so they should know what that means. But, yeah. Exaggerate every word. Yeah, over exaggerate every word, but more importantly, every syllable. So, I have a big mouth, like literally, and like socially speaking, like I love to gossip, but I also just have a big ass mouth, okay? So when I talk, I naturally open my mouth very wide. Some people do not do that. If you're like really mousy, and you kind of talk like this, and you like kiki, ha ha, like mm, your mouth maybe opens up like this wide, okay? And when you spread and try to be cute about it, you sound like shit, okay? <laughs> you need to open your mouth up, okay? And it's like ha ha ha, but like I'm being so serious. You're not supposed to be whispering. You're not telling a secret. You're winning a debate, okay? Again, walk the walk. So we're, we're manifesting, okay? So you need to be able to train your mouth because it doesn't normally speak like this to open itself up. Over enunciation helps with this. The point of this drill is not to be fast. Again, it is about hitting every syllable and moving your mouth around every part of the word, okay? It's awkward. By the time you are done doing it, if you've never done that before and you don't talk like that normally, okay, your jaw will probably ache just a tad. I'm not saying we're trying to hurt ourselves here, but I am saying that it will be unfamiliar because you don't normally talk that way. So the muscles in your face will be like, this is weird. What are we doing? Okay. Eventually you'll be able to get a little bit faster because your body will be used to it. And then it will naturally be incorporated into the way that you speak in debates. The second thing, backwards, scroll to the bottom of your document. Read from the bottom of the page all the way up. Also for about five to 10 minutes, whatever. This is helpful for what reason do we think? This is just a goofy thing that my coach told me to do. Obviously it has no significant educational purpose. Someone that's not in my lab. It makes your brain process the words without processing the full sentences, so you distinguish between every word when you speak, and it helps with clarity. Facts. When we're spreading, um, and in this age of debate, okay, um, you oftentimes, your mind, let me make sure I'm doing this right, just kidding, your mouth is moving faster, sort of, than your mind is processing what is actually on the page, which means that you're not actually reading, and the result is exactly what Eleanor said, okay, is all of those things, you sound less clear, you're not actually reading the words, and there's this little buzz that starts to develop. And so, under every word, you might be saying stuff, but there's just like this constant, uh, that sounds like it, and it makes you sound like super monotone and really annoying to listen to, and it makes me want the debate to be over almost instantaneously. That sucks um, for the judge, okay? Um, first of all, but second of all, um, it's also what results in like clipping, I feel like, the most. So students, if, who knows what clipping is? Homegirl behind Robbie. Um, it's like yeah, you're not reading all the card, but then you act like you read the card, but you're skipping words, etc. That might not be malicious, but some of you definitely do it. I love to not vote for teams based on clipping because it means I don't have to watch the rest of the debate. And judges are lazy. If you went to the In the Minds of a Judge thing that Caroline was talking about, he mentions this. So if you're not reading the whole card, axed. You're out of there. Most people will not do this because they're just like, oh, it's the game, bro. Like, they, they're so fast. <laughs> sure, if you're just going like this, yeah, rolling your tongue is easy. I agree. <laughs> Read. <laughs> Backwards. Very important. Okay. Um, another thing that you can do for this, I don't think it's as good, but sometimes it's a little bit more fun for, like, camp purposes. You can insert a random word in between each and every word. So... I don't know. Yesterday, our group did, like, cephalopod between every word of the card. Oh, it was rough. It was rough. It was a lot. Um, the last drill is just forward. So how you normally think of a speaking drill. Okay? You just go forward. 
But instead of trying to go as fast as you can, you should go as clear as you can, as fast as you can in that order. What do I mean by that? Personally, when you're speaking in debates, I do not think, wait for it, you should ever, ever start off at what you think is your 100% speed. Why do we think this is? Christian. Judge can't understand shit you're saying. Judge can't understand shit you're saying. I agree. What else? Right. Usually the first part of your speech has some very important aspects of it, and if you go out of the gate super fast, you're not going to be able to flow it. Like, you, the judge doesn't flow your plan text. When... Spitting mad facts. I agree. Also, it's, like, scary if they just, like, start screaming out of nowhere. I agree. <laughs> there is a lot of people, but a particular someone I'm thinking of that does this, fill in the blanks, if you will. A lot of times, if you just start really fast, your clarity is going to be kind of bad, unless you, if you, like, steadily build up to it, you're probably going to sound better by the end. I agree. All facts. Yes? This one's smaller, but, like, if it's the your first speech of the debate, it's good for the judge to be able to, like, process the way you're spreading before you start going really fast, because people are different. Okay, so I might forget some of the ones that you listed because all of those are important. So hopefully you're writing them down or you just like internalize them completely. Maybe it's never coming back. Hello? Jesus Christ. Okay, so. I'm not doing this anymore, respectfully. I love this for you all. Anyway, so the next part of this, right, exactly, is that first of all, when you were talking, or rather, I'll start with this. In high school, how many times have you been judged by a judge like several times throughout the season? Like you're judged by them every tournament. Okay, cool. Um, how many times have you had like a judge in like the same, like in the same tournament, like one in prelims, one in like elimination rounds? Okay, good. So that means judge circulation is getting a little bit better in high school. That's not always been the case. And sometimes when you're on more local circuits, it is very rare that you get judged by the same person every tournament. So for those people, it's really important for you to work your way up to your fastest speed rather than start there. Because if a judge is not familiar with your speaking style, how you sound, your cadence, your tone, okay, it is also just like very hard to like start processing someone that you only just met um, and like hearing what they mean. So like even if you're going really fast, right, part of processing words is like context. I'm like, oh, that sounds like they're saying this. But if I'm unfamiliar with your voice, I have zero idea what you might mean, even though like it sounds close enough to the word, right? So you need to give them pen time, which I think was gotten to by a couple of people, right? Not only to flow the most important part of your arguments, because you're usually framing arguments and framing the debate at the top of the speech, so you should be slower, but you're also giving them time to acclimate and get used to your voice and what you sound like. I promise you, if you get better at doing this, Okay, starting from about 65, 70% and working your way up to your 100%, I promise you, your speaks will improve because more than likely you or your partner will be the only ones doing this. And I'm assuming that you'll go home and be like, partner, it just said this, blah, blah, blah. Because seriously, the more of you that do this, the better because I still have to watch the videos, all I'm saying. Okay, so I promise you, your speaks will get like better, like off jump just from doing that. I'm not saying you're going to instantly become a top speaker, but I am saying that it will vary, like you will see a difference. Honestly, probably in just decisions and debates that you win too, because the judge will no longer be missing like your framing arguments. So there's that. Um, great. So, yes. I've heard conflicting things about this. Is it that if you do the drills off of like the doc, you're actually going to be reading it around and it's a random block of text? Great question. So, personally, hold on, let me just double check. My things here. So I think that in order for you to, I'll go down to this slide. So I think that the way that you should drill or the way you should think about practice is that it's not just like reading cards or like a one AC, one NC that I think that you should be practice drilling or like speaking over. Okay. Because again, everything in debate is a performance and the judge has to internalize more than just cards and whether or not you read them. Yes or no, but also your blocks. And then just like the overall construction of the speech, right? So I do think it's important, right? I'm not saying that you should practice drilling just with blocks, but I do think you should practice reading your blocks, okay? Because most of the time, you all will read your blocks like you're reading cards, and then judges will not internalize or process any of that information nearly as well as you want them to. And that's bad because obviously you have a lot of arguments that you worked on writing that are constructed in those like areas of the speech, right? 
So I do think you definitely need to practice reading blocks, but I also think, and I'll talk about this later, but this is like the important thing about redos, because drilling should not just be seen as like, I'm practicing getting faster. This is about speech delivery and like executing a successful performance in debate. And so redos are almost just as important at getting good at speaking and getting speaker points as drilling for 15 or 20 minutes a day. And I don't think that redos are prioritized in the same way as speaking drills are in terms of getting good speaks. Because a judge voting for you is not just about how fast they think you are. They don't have a like measure that's like, how many words per minute did this team get versus how many words per minute did this team get? Which, again, is why I'm confused why most people are like, that person is so slow, okay? But like, if they won the debate, like, I don't know. Like, I, do you have the L or do you have the W? I just, that's the thing I care about. I don't know about you, but I'm just like, who cares about how many words per minute? I just like don't get it. That's not to say that you shouldn't like try to be fast. You shouldn't get better at spreading. I do think it's a useful tool. It's a part of debate and how it's evolved. It's valuable. Um, but that is to say that I think that you should value giving redos and practice speech giving in the same way that you practice or prioritize speaking drills and in increasing your speed or efficiency. Okay or speed and efficiency, because those things are different. So yes, practice reading your blocks, practice reading your cards, and then redos or giving speeches, period. The other thing I suggest is that you should also record yourself. This is like a part of drilling, but you should record yourself while you're practicing. Either, like sometimes you record redos because you need to send them to a coach, but you should also record them for you. Practice yourself giving like speaking drills, or doing speaking drills rather, and giving speeches and listen back to them yourself because you would be surprised at how many things that you catch because we're just like inherently self-conscious beings okay we're like why the f did i just say the ways in which 18 times that's like the most inefficient thing ever what is another word or another thing that i could be saying or doing right recording yourself very valuable and you should go back and you should listen to it you should be like okay what are some things that i can prove do I think I sound very clear? Um, and what are some indicators about how I can make myself more clear that I internalize and use in debate? Yes. So like one thing about redos that my coach just makes me do is like transcription and we giving it proficiency. What's your advice for kind of utilizing speaking in that or do you think that's a good drill to do for speaking? I'm not really sure what I'm, like what you mean by like transcription. So it's like have like something is listening to you talk and it's like writing what you say. Yeah, to write all of it and then get rid of everything that's inefficient and then re-give it. Um, I mean, I basically think that that's just like a way to give like a redo. But yeah, like I, I've never done that personally. Um, and I don't know many people who do. That's not to say that it's like an ineffective drill. But like my thing too is just like understanding like efficiency is in addition to about like the words, like how many words that you use or like the repetitive nature of the words that you use. And is also just about like, do you also know how to naturally transition between concepts? Or can you read a judge or be in a headspace where while you are talking, you can also assess, does the judge get it? Yes, cool, I don't need to do anything more on this, move on. And the reason that I'm kind of like breaking these things up and kind of going a little bit all over the place is just because I do think that some of these things are like not considered when we're thinking about speaks. Like speaks are not determined based off of, again, just how fast you are or whether or not you stumbled. But it's like, did you effectively communicate to the judge or did the judge feel a part of like what was happening in the space, right? Can you make strategic decisions? Can you read their facial expressions and do things based off of like what you think they're buying, what you think they're not buying? Did the argument that you like made, was it innovative, was it interesting? Did it keep things fun and fresh, as I like to say, okay? So yes, I think that is fine. It makes sense to me. I just like never use it. And I'm also not sure like, does it seem pretty accurate? Like, like it catches everything that you say? Yeah. Love that. Some people might not have access to like, my computer has like a shitty mic, clearly, because I have zero idea what's going on with my computer. But I don't know if I would be able to do that, but I do think that that makes sense as far as like, okay, like how many words did I do? But I do think recording gets you a similar thing. So it's like, if you go back and listen to yourself, what words were repeated, blah, blah, blah. Write a bunch of comments for yourself or have a coach or someone listen to it. Go back, re-give the speech, take those things out. But watching yourself, I do think, provides like a second level of it, which is like, also, when I'm talking, am I swaying like this and like moving my hands really weird? Or like, am I just like going like this a lot? Or like, am I breathing like this? <gasps> okay, 
Some people do that, whatever, you shouldn't because it's a really inefficient way to breathe and I'll talk about that in a second. But basically, like, there's other things that go into like what is your speaking style and the things. And so some of that is distracting and can detract from your ability to speak well. It also distracts the judge from like paying attention to what's going on. I can't tell you the amount of times that I've watched someone like spread and I'm just like hyper focused on the fact that they're basically standing like this and talking. So I know their diaphragm is cut off and I'm afraid they're gonna pass out. So I miss like eight of their arguments because I'm just like, if a kid passes out in my room, I'm black and I am not, I'm gonna be legally liable for this. Like what is happening? Okay, so things to consider. Great, the next thing. Breathe, Jesus, Lord, breathe, for the love of God. Not overly dramatic, right? But you should breathe and practice your breathing. Asia, what do you mean by this? Well, first of all, I think this is a slept on because most people are just like, well, obviously, everyone knows how to breathe. Okay, semantics. <laughs> I get it. Like, we all know how to breathe. But in terms of debate, like, I do think, obviously, you're speaking at a higher rate and you're doing a lot more things and like it's a little bit more of an intense situation. Debate's not like a sport officially, but like you do have to think about like, okay, like training your voice, just like you would train like an instrument. So similar to like band or like whatever, like when you, if you, does any of you play an instrument, like a wind instrument or like, yeah. So like you get it, like diaphragm, breathe from your gut. Like you gotta be efficient. If you're winded like halfway through the piece or whatever, like, that's going to suck, and you're probably going to sound worse because your like, breaths aren't as intentional. Um, so be intentional. Have an idea about where you need to breathe. So something that you can do for this is that take like a really deep breath from the base of your gut. So like, like all of my air came from down here, not just like up here, okay? Take a really deep breath and start at the top of your car to just see how far you can go on that one breath. And that's just useful because it can kind of train yourself to like recognize like, okay, this is like when I get about tired, this is what I feel like when I get tired or when I feel like I need to breathe again. Um, okay, this is about how many words I got through. Cool. And so when you're beginning on working on like being cognizant of your breathing, I would start with that exercise and then start integrating like, okay, little indicators like, okay, I know I can get about this far on this kind of breath. So maybe you start marking a little bit like where you might breathe or how you do that in your speech doc. You don't have to do that. Some of you might not have to do that. But I think when you're beginning or you're getting familiar with this concept, concept, it's valuable at least when you're practicing. Okay? So like reading through your blocks, speech docs, etc. Um, the other thing about breathing is that, again, it needs to come from up here. Some of you, like, there's like superficial breaths that happen, which like these are kind of like involuntary. Like the little breaths that are like, like it's very quick and it all came from basically up here. Happens, makes sense, but... If you're doing that over and over again, so like maybe every couple of words, you're gonna have to start hyperventilating. Like you're just gonna do that. So don't. And be like acknowledge that if you take deeper, more intentional breaths, and the more that you practice doing that, you will be able to read for longer periods of time before you have to take another breath. Okay? So another value of recording is noticing where you're breathing and how you're breathing, and is your breathing noticeable to the judge? And will it scare them? Which is the demonstration I did before. Um Great, that's basically all of those things. The other thing that I think is a little bit related to breathing, but also like your stance, I think goes into this just a little bit, not like literally the breathing part, but it's like semi-related. It's like, don't stand like this, like your knees are locked together, like have like a little bit of a casual and comfortable stance. Spread your legs apart, because if you stand like this and you get really tired, you can also pass out. There's a core thing that you get from this lecture, if anything, please do not pass out in front of your judge because you did not listen to what I say, because that would be wild, okay? Great, next thing. You cannot breathe or take intentional breaths, excuse me, if you're bent over like this. Half of you do not know how to like raise your stand. I should have had someone bring one for a demonstration. Great, Bring. not you bringing it today. Did you not bring it yesterday? I'm forgetting it every But you brought it today, morning. see? <laughs> this and I this guy, okay, set it up for me. Just like normal, like first setting. Great, just like that. Most of you don't know, how many of you have one of these? Okay, great, a majority of you. If you don't have one, great. The thing that you're shooting for is that ideally you want your laptop to be about your chin, okay? So like this direction. I don't know how even this is, but I don't want it up here or parallel with my face because then the judge can't see my face, which inhibits your ability to control the vibes, okay? So I don't want it like this. So I probably want it a little bit on the side of me like this, and I want it to be about across from my chin. 
because I'm not bending over, but I'm also not looking up and elongating the space that like the breath has to travel, okay? I'm just like this, P good posture, we're vibing. So, thank you, deliver, <laughs> slay. So, this, too short for me, personally. I might not literally bend over, but some of you naturally do that because you're like, the screen is too small. I don't know why you're not zooming, first of all. Like, just zoom the fucking words in. I don't know, but that's just my humble opinion. Um, but some of you would just, like, naturally lean over. Or some of you, like, lean on your stand. Mm. And we'll talk about the implications of that for cross-sex and stuff. A little bit here and a little bit in the questions that need to be answered thing. But, like, if you bend over, it's, like, ruining the whole vibe. And you're, like, it's not efficient. It's bad for your breathing. And it also just kind of like makes your like stance or like your presence just like not as powerful as it could be if you were just standing straight up. So if I was setting my stand up, pretty sure this is still what it is unless I've grown somehow. Well, I guess I'm in platform, so maybe that's what it is. Exactly how it should be. And this is exactly how I would be standing basically. Great. Um, thank you. You can deconstruct this or just wait till the end. So are there any questions about the logistics of getting better at speaking? Comments, concerns, or additives, yes. So I like bounce and move a lot while I'm speaking. Like what's your best? You what? I bounce, I speak, and I like move my arms like this. Like I like I'm very expressive when I speak. But like, I, I guess you. I'm, I'm dealing. Really with. distracting. So like, what do you recommend as like a good middle ground of like having some expression but not like mm. I don't know. Give me a second to figure out a way to answer this question without confusing you based on what I've said previous. So, like, I think. Really distractive, like, hand motions that are, like, you're waving back and forth like this or, like, you're, like, doing a bunch of, like, like, you're moving around or you're swaying a lot. That can be really distracting, um, especially when you sound like a vacuum cleaner on top of it. You're just, like, what, what is all this movement to just produce this? You know what I mean? However, being expressive is not bad. Like, I don't want to vilify that because, like, we're about to get to that part, but it's just, like, that's a part of, like, if that's just how you are, then you should embody like your natural presence like if you're just like a very bubbly human i love that for you use it to your benefit because what i'm about to get to is just that the other thing that spreading has done to debate is it has convinced almost everyone that if you do not sound like insert one college debater or spreader here you're trash incorrect you're not supposed to sound like anyone else obviously spreading unifies it a little bit because you're all speaking quickly so that might create a little bit of similarity, but one, you shouldn't be spreading like, I don't want to say in all the debate, but like I said, like you start from 60 to 70. So it's like, you're not going hundred percent the whole time. Right. And there's obviously some like layers, to, like maybe you slow down to like communicate a point to create presence, whatever. You're also like doing cross X and all these other things. So it's just like, you should the, like, the goal should not be like, if I'm good, I'll know because I sound exactly like someone else. No. You need to figure out a way to embody and spreading should fit you. You should not fit spreading. Does that make sense what I'm saying? That's what I'm communicating. So in terms of like your expressiveness, if that's like primarily verbal, keep it. If it's in terms of like really inefficient movement that will make you more tired, no. Something that I would suggest is that you need to find a less distracting like movement. So for me, like I used to do this a lot. Like I used to just like fuck with my shoulder. Um, I don't remember, like, I'm sure if you watch a, a video of me, you also see me doing a bunch of, like, weird movements, but they're just, like, little things to keep my, like, body stimulated while I'm talking, because that's often also what happens. Like, I have ADHD, so, like, me spreading, it's, like, my mind is getting bored, because it's, like, I'm doing something that I've done for so long, and I'm, like, okay, I need to be doing something else. Um, the other thing is, is, like, I would also walk in place. So, like, this is a little bit less distracting than, like, if you're, like, swaying or, like, rocking like this. But, like, I would, like, walk or, like, run in place. Some people do that, too. Like, I just, like, take baby steps. So those are other things. But I would see if you can practice or incorporate those while you're doing drills and see if that curbs the thing. The other thing is, like, being expressive in rebuttals is, like, a little bit less, con like, has little less consequence than if you were doing it in, like, a more speech, like, spreading-oriented speech, like a constructive, just because, like, probably less cards and a lot more, like, 
vibes. You see what I'm saying? Also arguments and winning, but I'll get to that if that answers your question. Do you want to stick a pin in that though? Because a couple of other things. So practice how you play. Very important. So when you're drilling, you should try to be standing up. You should try to have a surface that you can put your laptop on that is this, the height that I said, right? Um, and take it seriously. And again, record and try to give the speech. If you're giving redos, oftentimes students are like, oh, it's not perfect. I don't know. I can't give it. Or you mess up and then you re-restart the recording because you're like, I can't send this to someone. I messed it up. You mess up in debates. Are you going to just like leave? Listen, the debate isn't over until the fat lady sings. And if I'm in the back of the room, that's me. So ultimately, if you mess up, I guess, but like you could still win the debate. I don't like, what do you mean? Anything can happen. You see what I'm saying? So when you're giving redos or doing drills, if you mess up, okay, you like, you need to find a way to like also keep your momentum, keep your ethos in spite of you messing up. So you should also practice that when you're giving redos. Messing up is natural. It happens. That was kind of the point of me trying to show those videos at the beginning because honestly, there's still a bunch of things that I like dislike about the way that I sounded or the way that I spoke at my last NDT versus the speech of like me in the beginning when I was like 18. Because like you'll never get it right. Just some days like you're on and you're like, nothing can stop me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's a rising, like I'm rising above. And other days you're like, damn, I don't know if I was like doing anything right in that speech. Like I have no idea. That's natural. But you need to like practice that because if you are really thrown off by like messing up or stumbling or that really freaks you out, then you like doing the thing where you record a speech to send to someone or you're drilling or you like keep messing up so you stop and restart to try to get it right, it's going to keep throwing you in debates. And that's also partially why some of you like sound a little bad because you're, you're not used to messing up and then hopping right back on the horse and trying to keep your momentum. So you need to practice that while you're doing the things, if that makes sense what I'm saying. Um, the other aspects of this, so I already talked about the importance of practicing your cards, blocks, reading all of those things. The next thing is confidence 101. There's very little time left, so I'm going to try to be brief about this, but we're probably going to 12, respectfully. Confidence 101, which is basically just the art of faking it until you make it. If you don't know what's going on, first of all, the judge probably doesn't know either. Okay? So part of being a good speaker is just being like, all right, what is in my control in terms of the debate? My AF or my negative argument is in my control. Ideally, you've done enough research and you've done enough of the things with your team that you know your arguments. As long as you know your arguments backwards and front and you feel like you know them better than anyone else, they're inevitably going to ask you questions. They're going to respond to you. That's the nature of debate. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to, sure, they're going to have something to say, but as long as you know your arguments, right, that will always be in your control. So in terms of speaking and controlling the vibes of the room, that should be foundational to your confidence in terms of how you carry yourself in the space because it's just like, I know my arguments and I know that I know my arguments. So at the very least, I will always have that. It's also okay if you don't know. I love to lie in debates. I love to say this, but the rule of the 2 AR, lie, thief, and steal. I'm sure people talk about this, but that's basically the TLDR. So all that is to say is that confidence, you have to just start somewhere. If you're just like feeling kind of like, ooh, like I might not sound as good as this other person, blah, blah, blah. Remember that thing I said earlier about you shouldn't sound like anyone else. So if you don't sound like them, it doesn't mean you don't sound as good. It just means you sound different. Okay, very major, major key. Um, but your confidence has to start somewhere, so ground it in something. I don't, like, literally policy debate, like, the, like, content of, like, politics, et cetera, et cetera, all the counter plans, blah, blah, blah. That's not my vibe. I'm not fooling anybody when I say that or I'm not lying. Everybody agrees with it. They're like, yeah, that's not her thing. Her thing, performance debate, other forms of, like, critical debate, blah, blah, blah. That's my vibe. Just because I have a different vibe does not mean it's not as valuable. But I'm not going to, like stress myself out because I don't know as much about the, I don't know, the state's counter plan as Callahan. That's not my thing. Who cares? As long as I know my things, good. And if you ground your confidence in what you do know and then give yourself a reasonable amount of time to learn the other things that you want to know and debate, that is a way healthier way to develop confidence and that confidence carries into the room and into the speeches that you give. And also makes you sound like a better speaker because you sound like you want to be there and not like you're kind of dying or looking at death in the face, okay? Some of you, when you get up to speak, kind of look like that. I'm like, damn, I don't know if they've been blessed up, which leads me to, hold on, blessing up, okay? <laughs> I got this from uh, my lovely coach and mentor and friend, 
Felicia Hampton, okay? I don't know if anyone, you know who that is, but she's a very, very prominent and successful black woman in debate, okay? Debated at the University of Kansas, love her to death. That's Bessie right there. Basically, what we think blessing up means is that you have to learn how to give yourself confidence even when it's not there, or learn how to hype yourself up and create the conditions for like a really good, sp for, uh, create the conditions for you to feel confident, but ready for the debate to happen. Again, this starts by only worrying about things that are in your control. You cannot control what panel you got. You cannot control, right, like what the other team is going to say. And you can't know everything that there is to know in a debate. So the more you stress about those things, that affects how you sound. And if I, as a judge, don't buy that you feel like you sound very good or that you don't know what you're talking about, I'm probably not going to vote for you or the likelihood is less. So you need to focus your energy on the things that you can control and you should try to use that to direct how you control the space. Other things that aid with this, besides right, focusing on what you can control. The worst thing that can happen in a debate is that you lose. That is literally the worst thing that can happen. And I'm not saying that as like, that's horrible. I'm saying that as like, just to put it into perspective, the only thing that can happen is the judge is just like, I did not get it or agree. You have five more prelim debates and then a potential to break. You know what I'm saying? Like the worst thing that can happen is if you stumble over something, you try a new argument, or you try a strategy or like a, a cross X moment, is that you lose. And like obviously losing sucks. Like I love to win. And as someone who's won a lot of things, I get it. But also as someone who's won a lot of things, I also have lost a lot of things. It's an integral part of the game. So also don't make strategic decisions or don't have moments in your head like during the debate. Try to like get rid of these like things where you're like, okay, like, I don't know if we can do this because we might win the debate or lose the debate. Or, oh my God, like, I can't believe they read that card. Like, we're fucked. Da 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 da. Affects the energy of the, like, the judge can pick up on that so easily. Like, I can sense panic from miles away. If you start from the premise of, like, the worst thing that can happen is we lose, why don't we just try it? Mmm. Okay. The next part of that, or the second half of that, is you're basically playing with the house's money. Stop worrying about other people's expectations of you about how you sound and what you're going for and how you debate. Who cares? That's basically the TLDR of all of this. Is basically, who cares? Obviously the judge cares, but like that's a situation by situation basis. I don't care about what's on your wiki. I don't care who's dating who. You shouldn't care who like went to the so-and-so camp and didn't go to so-and-so camp. Literally, who cares? I went to the two-week JDI all of my years of high school. I didn't go to Michigan. I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't get coached by insert whatever. And now my coach is like one of the most prolific coaches in like the game. Wasn't at the time, no one knew who my coach was, didn't know who I was, but who was the first black woman to be top speaker? You see what I'm saying? There's, you, all of your potential matters more than what other people are overly concerning themselves with in terms of the social game. So again, if you let other people's expectations of you or what you think is happening in like the social sphere of debate, which I'm not saying that it doesn't matter, like I get it, you all are in high school, you live very complicated lives. But that is to say that like, sometimes you're getting in your own head or rather getting in other people's heads and letting that affect how you sound whether or not you wanna be there, whether or not you feel like you have a chance at like teaching the judge something or teaching the other team a thing. Debate can be fun. Make debate fun again, damn it. Like, what is happening? Okay, other thing. Everybody can catch an L. If the first thing is true, right, that the worst thing that can happen is lose, if you're debating another team, you're like, they've gotten top speaker like two or three times and like they've won all these tournaments. And I don't even know if I can stay in the game. I've seen a lot of good teams take an L to a team I've never heard of before. And it's hilarious. Mostly because, again, there's all these expectations of debate where it's like, oh, you lost the debate? Yeah, anyone can. It's always a possibility. No one, just for walking in the room, deserves to win. So earn it. Have a presence like you deserve to, to win it. If you think that you deserve it, you're more likely to get it. You deserve to win. You deserve for your ideas and your style of speech and your style of communication to matter. And you, if you have that energy about you, people will pick up on that. It will be, dang. Like, I don't know why I'm out of breath at the end of every tournament because I'm spreading kind of like a vacuum cleaner. And this other person was just kind of talking to the judge like they were a human. And like, they won the whole damn thing. I'm like, sometimes it's not that complicated. You know what I mean? Like, great. The last thing, which is my cringe teacher thing that I always include in speaking, is that L stands for learn rather than lose. Okay, Asia. <laughs> okay, but you see what I'm saying? Very valuable. Every judge perceives things differently, right? And this is kind of a part of like my judges are people too thing, which is that judges want to have fun too. 
So every debate can teach you something else about your communication style. When a judge says, oh, I really like this argument, or I like how you sounded when you had this moment, or like that cross-ex thing was hilarious, live in that. That's a good thing. Even if you didn't win the debate, that means that someone was really like sitting with what you were saying, and they really enjoyed your presence. And I promise you, the more fun a judge has judging you, okay, yep, that makes sense. The more fun the judge has, the more likely they're, like, they're going to vote for you. I promise you. Are there any questions about sort of like the technique, the logistics, or like the vibes of the thing? I know all this is just like, what does this have to do with being, I promise, I promise. If you embody these things, one, you will just like debate more, okay? But also, it's all part of the process of like, the more fun you're having a debate, also, the better you will sound. And you will sound like you want to be there. You will sound like you want to win. And I know it's like, oh, this is just like that manifestation stuff that that girl with the crystals on TikTok was talking about. No. Also, yes, but no. It's much more complicated than that, okay? Having faith is a part of getting better. And the more that you like debate, the more that you're likely to do it. And the more likely you do it, the more likely you're to practice. And the more likely you are to practice, the more wins got come. You see what I'm saying? You will win more. Um... And also, just won't feel like dereliction every time you're a term. You're like, this is my eighth Red Bull. Drink water, also. <laughs> Jesus. Drink water because your throat is dry. And that's also why you're like voice cracked for the eighth time during your 2AC. See how this goes? Sometimes it reminds me of the other things. But that's like basically the thing. Like, I wanted to give this lecture because this really isn't that complicated. And the reason I was mad about the videos thing is because I do think that those videos are representative of the fact that, like, they're two or three years apart, I think. One of the years I got a, like, I got a type speaker, the other year I had no idea what was going on and I was basically just like faking it and going on all vibes. Okay, and like there's a little bit of difference in the style and the thing, but like they don't really sound that different. It's just an evolution of how I felt about debate and about the way, like whether or not I believe that what I was saying had value. Because that also controls how you sound. Great, are there any questions? I know it's 11.55. Trying to be more confident, how do I avoid coming off as abrasive? Interesting, great question. Some of those notions are very racialized. I will start with that. So, I'm not saying that every time someone's like, you're being aggressive, you're just like, you're a racist. That's not what I'm saying. But that is to say that, like, just keep that in mind. It's like some people really struggle with confrontation, which is why debate can be good because it can teach them about the importance of like conflicting ideas and whatever. But um, the way that I would start with this is just being like, because I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen me debate personally, but I had a very overwhelming personality, is what I'll call it, because I don't think I was being aggressive. I was just assertive, and I enjoyed my time in that space. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. Um, first of all, acknowledge like your physical presence. So I guess I didn't talk about this very much, but like when you're in a physical cross sex space, like I don't know, are you tall? Come here. You you're giving tall. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, great. Come come. Not enough. Yeah. Not like that's enough clapping, I just meant like that's a sufficient height for what I'm trying to demonstrate here. And then I'll take off my platform. Okay, so see, he naturally did it. First of all, you have no personal space. Okay, just stand for okay. <laughs> Naturally, you see what's happening? So we do cross sex, right? And someone's like, so like, mm. when you're a bro, okay, or you're giving bro, if that's how society scripts you, I'm not saying you are giving bro, but just I'm saying if society scripts you as a bro, okay, the consequence, right, is sometimes they project aggression or whatever, but also sometimes you give aggression even when you don't mean it. So naturally, he was just like, oh, this is fun. We're doing a demonstration. But he did stand kind of close to me, and now he's, like, kind of towering over me, and I have to, like, look up at you. And it's giving, like, power dynamics. You see what I'm saying? When you're not giving bro or you're perceived societally as bro, okay, because obviously there's a lot of, like, texture there, it's okay to kind of assert yourself. So a way that you can do this, right, is, like, maybe stand in front of the person instead of, like, letting him stand directly, like, next to you, okay, to give yourself, like, you're giving good vibes, et cetera, whatever, okay? If you are, like, giving bro, personal space, very important, okay? And also, just, like, start off, like, slow. Like, not everything needs to be a joke. There is a certain time and place for, like, swag or, like, making funny and haha. But you do have to just, like, make sure you're, like, starting with, like, okay, I know there's, like, some, like, a social dynamic here. Like, if you're debating a team with, like, two not bros, okay? Like, okay, what is, like, the, the production here? Like, I might think this is funny, but I don't know these people very well. And obviously, too, like, if you know someone, like, you're debating someone that you're really close to, or, like, a friend or whatever, you can also sit down. Thank you. I just needed someone tall that demonstrated. Yes. Thank you. So, my assistant, right, so, but 
obviously it's like there's a lot of texture here but just like start off kind of like slow just like ask them basic questions like about the thing and then if they're starting to give like spice if it's giving that like they can handle themselves in the kitchen okay they can take the heat then you can pick it up a notch you see what i'm saying but that should happen gradually i learned this the hard way the minute that you like come out of the gates when no one in the room has context that's when you get the like projections of like whoa why are you yelling you know what i mean so that's like a way to like prevent that but i i started with the racialization thing because sometimes that just like happens or is inevitable if you are a person of color um or women so like you link to one of those so that's why i mentioned that um or just give me a link to one of those maybe i'm incorrect but that said are there other questions comments or concerns yes how do you deal with the development of like nervous or anxious habits Mm, good question. Um, I guess it depends on like what they are, but like I try to counterbalance like every nervous habit I have with a positive one. So like if I'm anxious, so I do have a bad habit, I vape, I like whatever that happens, right? And it happens in debate. I'm not gonna lie to you about it because you're getting close to an age where I'm pretty sure almost all the teenagers try to do this anyway. You shouldn't, don't do as I say, not as I do. Okay, but. I did. And so I was like, mm, probably this is very bad. Shouldn't be doing this. But there are videos of me on the internet, which is why I'm not lying about it. So that's the thing. So every time I would do that because I was anxious, okay, this is just an example, I would try to drink water. I'm like, okay, I need to like do a healthy thing. Like I need to also be doing a healthy thing when I'm feeling anxious. So try to like ha find a healthy habit to counteract any of like your nervous like habits or like take a walk. Like if your nervous habit is just like you're kind of rocking in your chair, like I rock sometimes to like regulate like a lot of my like overstimulation. So sometimes when I rock, I'm just like, this isn't really going anywhere. And now I just feel like a bunch of energy building up in my system, like as like in my physical being. So I take walks. Um, and so it's okay to give yourself about 10 minutes before a debate starts to like regulate your system, to regulate your vibes. Okay. Get water, put on a, like a really angry song and just like, let it go. You know what I'm saying? Let go and let God. The other thing too is about regulating that is you need to make sure that at least in the tournament space, like in the single tournament that you're in. Once the debate happens, it's over. So like give yourself like 10 to 15 minutes to either be really excited about what just happened or like really upset about what happened and then you just have to let go and let God or insert whatever belief system you have. Just like gotta let it go. Because it can inhibit both if it was really positive or really negative whether or not you're able to focus on the next debate. So like for me, like I remember when I like won a really good debate and then I had another debate that was like kind of hard after that because I had moved up in the bracket or whatever and then I was like, oh my God, like I just won this debate and now everyone's expecting like this performance and this demonstration of like the underdog da, 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 and like that creates stress and I was like I just want a debate and you would think that that would give positive vibes but it wasn't really same thing if it's negative so find healthy habits to counterbalance any nerves recognize that nerves are normal and if you don't see other people having nerves in the same way that you're having nerves they're lying or they're better at masking because civil society has conditioned us to be ashamed of our feelings okay um, so it's natural, normal, try to find a habit that counterbalances or makes you feel better about that thing. Not to be like, you know, a therapist about it, but take walks, get some vitamin D. Um, and also just have like a pre-tournament or a pre-round routine. Like maybe you do need a Red Bull one or two a day max. Okay. And then that should like regulate depending on what energy you drink. Cause I know Celsius is different and then there's monster and then there's rain or whatever it is here. And then something else. So be reasonable. But maybe you do get a, like a fancy little Red Bull and then you drink like a good thing of water and then you and your partner like listen to your song and then you talk like a little bit of crap on like how your coach is dressed today. I don't know, <laughs> but just, it is what it is. Okay, just like have something for you to like hang on to and just recognize, remember debate is not that serious. There is no MBA for debate. So after college, if you want to debate in college, I love that for you, hit me up, rock chalk. Okay, if you want to debate in college, love that for you. But it's really not that serious. Like the worst thing that can happen is taking L. So why are you nervous? Like, I get that there are some people that are kind of douchebags in debate and are not getting this lecture. So they'll be like, Ugh. you sounded like poop. And you're like, okay, whatever. Like you clearly are insecure and that's not my problem. Which is basically should be your response. You know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to sound like everyone else. You're not supposed to have the same experience as everyone else. So just vibe in your, in your area. And I promise you will sound so much better and you will start to see the results. I pinky swear. Great. Good luck to you all in your season and the things. I know this went over a little bit. And if there are more questions about this, I will be at research time.